compared to normal speaker. You run out. With the hand move off and you float, and instead of proceeding to the next part of the crowd, I look back at the crowd that was there when I ran out. With Joe Rose, our next speaker is Joe Rose. A young woman who is a co-founder of New York Freedom Rally. is always talking about the brainwashing but sometimes people don't explain how we got to this point right yeah. and if some of you have heard me speaking before I'd love to talk about narcissistic abuse because what's happening to us is abuse right yeah. Yeah. and a lot of stuff that we don't also talk about is that it's not just the government that's abusive this abuse started within our own family system and it's just spilling out through the rest of society I was thinking the other day to myself I was I like, I like to contemplate and, and just think about things psychologically because I went to school for that. Um, even though I dropped out of college, I was working in the school system as a paraprofessional. Um, my last day of work was October 1st because I didn't comply with the mandates. I didn't provide proof of negative testing and I didn't get the vaccine. Now, if anyone here took the vaccine, I don't have any issue with you. My parents took it. I do not agree with the vaccination because of my own personal research that I have done. But it's your body, your choice. If no one coerces you, then that's fine, right? But if you were coerced to get it to keep your job, then we have a problem. We have a problem. And I have a problem with that. Yeah. No one should have to be coerced to do something that they don't want to do to keep their jobs. Yeah. Right. And, and we need to ask ourselves, who's paying? Who's paying the, the, the people at the top of the, the school system? Who owns them? Who owns these jobs? Because I personally, like, I, I love my job, right? I love working with children, right? And I, and I miss the money as well. But at the same time, I'm not going to work for an institution that's not going to have my best interest at heart. I'm not going to work for an institution that's willing to sold out people that they don't care that you have your children and that's family right. to feed. Yeah. Because an institution like that has no integrity. Yeah. And on the topic of narcissism and integrity, I'm going to get I'm going to say something that some people not, might not want me to say. So 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 we are demanding and I don't feel like we should have to demand anything, right? But we asking these people, we asking these politicians to be honest with us. But sometimes within our family system, we have abuses and we enable them. We don't call them out. We have pedophiles. We have all type of abusive system and we don't call it out. So before we call out other people, we need to see ourselves and change ourselves. Because the reason why we in this mess is because we were entertained to death, not caring about what these people were doing. Yeah. Well, they sat down passing bills and telling people by passing Congress. Yeah. Because we didn't get here overnight. These people didn't just wake up and say, oh, you know what? I'm going to do the new world order and I'm going to put in these vaccine mandates. Yeah. And this whole vaccine mandate is not even the issue. It's the whole agenda that they have for us to dehumanize yeah. us, to humanize yeah. them, to take away our property, yeah. to take away our right to work, That's to put in artificial intelligence instead of humans. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. It has been set up for decades. Yeah. It has been set up for decades. Again, it did not just happen overnight. The mandate are the icing on the cake. You open up the cake and you're going to see it's full of with a whole lot of other BS. Yeah. Yeah. They have been doing it little by little. They took over the school system because the school system is modeled after the prison system. Yeah. What do you do when you go to school? You got in line. When you go to prison, what do you do? You got in line. Then they take you to the cafeteria. Then they take you outside for recess. It's the same thing. Same thing. And psychologically, right? There are certain manipulations and tactics that is used. And again, it's not just the government doing, it has been done in our family. I advise everyone here to look up what's a scapegoat and, what, and what is the golden children. I advise everyone to look up what is gaslighting and triangulation. Yeah. You want to know what strangulation is? And then we all have done it. We all have done it. I will tell you what triangulation is. Triangulation is when the government uh, uh, give benefits, right? Certain um, um, uh, quality of life to the vaccinated people. You can go to the concerts. You can go to your job. Right. Then don't vaccinate it, don't get that same treatment. So what 
they do is they strangulate us so that we, if you're on vax, you can feel jealous of the vaccinated people. And then that's how you divide and conquer. Because then, as a vaccinated person, if you don't know the agenda, you might just go and get the vaccine just because you feel like you want to be part of that society. Because you're jealous that you're being ostracized. And this happens in our day-to-day -day life. A man might do that with another female. A woman might do that with another man. Just to get them jealous so that you can work hard to get under their control. Because this is about power and control. It has nothing to do, at this point, it has even nothing to do with money anymore. These people have heard it. The majority of our wealth, hence why poverty keeps coming up. up and they don't even care. But they claim that they want to save your life. They have been poisoning our air, poisoning our food, poisoning our mind, poisoning our children and the school system. And now we are to believe that these people really care about us. We are to believe that. They buy and pay politicians. Because the issue is also with politics. I voted for Trump. I'm a registered Republican. But hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have no loyalty to no political party and no politician. My loyalty is to us with the people. I don't care about these politicians because guess what? People want to be defending Biden. People want to be defending defending Trump. These people have millions and billions of dollars. Do we have that? Do we have that available for us? Are they helping us to get out of these mandates? Are they helping us to get out of these mandates? So any politician, any politician that's sitting on top of millions and billions of dollars and is not here speaking out against these mandates and he's not even helping us to get out of these mandates you are not my friend i don't care if i bought it for you or not you are not my friend right. Right. and this is where the issue comes we want someone else to do the dirty work for us why are we waiting for a political party why are we waiting for a candidate to save us we need to save ourselves yeah. if we don't take responsibility because again this is where the issue comes from part of becoming an adult is for us to get uncomfortable you have to get uncomfortable we have given these people we don't control anything they control our food supply what if they what, what if they take on the power grid what, what, what are we gonna do have anyone thought about that because my parents come from a third world developing country I have lived through that when they take off the power grid what, what, what are we gonna do here in America with no power have you guys thought of that? What are we going to do? There's a food shortage. Yeah. What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do? Because the reason why I'm saying all of that, because again, it's about the power and control. When people want to control you, they'll have you starving. And then here comes FEMA, which by the way, FEMA was created, not to give us relief. FEMA was created as part of the New World Order. Yeah. So that they can implement martial law, take over the roads, take over the food supply, take over every single thing. People really have to do research. Yeah. People really had to do research and I advise people to get away a little bit from the political stuff because it's not about the left and the right in a way. Because if it was, this wouldn't be happening in the Dominican Republic, it wouldn't be happening in Colombia, it wouldn't be happening in Australia, it wouldn't be happening in Canada. Okay? They do divide and conquer. They divided us with the left and the right. They divided us black and white, Jewish, Latino, Asian. They divided us by social class status, religion, age, male versus female. So, so we need to we need to understand psychologically. If you want to defeat your enemy, you have to know how your enemy thinks. Otherwise, you would never you would never win if you don't understand how these people think and how they move. Okay, yeah. so I, I want to advise everyone, like I said already, to look into the whole narcissism abuse so that you can understand exactly the methods that these people are using on us, the people. Yeah. For example, with the propaganda, you give people fear, 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 fear. Okay. And what happens is there's a part of our brain called the amygdala. It is responsible for like um, um, processing emotions. When you are giving fear so much, it hijacks the amygdala so therefore you're not able to reason if you want to understand your fellow man that is so scared that they don't even want to accept the evidence that you present to them yeah. understand that their brain has been hijacked their brain has been hijacked so they're not able to reason it's what they do so sometimes i get angry and sometimes i've gone into arguments and stuff like that but then i realize you know what 
I cannot blame them because when I was born, I didn't have this knowledge. It took me years upon research to understand psychologically how an abuser operates. And it's not easy to wake up, but at the same time, it's also a choice. Yeah. And sometimes, no matter how much we present evidence, some people do not want to admit that we have been lied to and manipulated because if you had to wake up, then you had to take self-responsibility for your whole life. Yeah. And it's not an easy job to do. It's not easy at all. And it takes a lot of pain. And it takes a lot of pressure for you to even do something to change your life. And that's why I talk about self-responsibility. Right, right. We need to take back the power. And if people do want to get into politics, that is absolutely fine. Just make sure that you have integrity and you won't sell your people out. Right. That's the only problem. We, the common folks, we should have taken over politics. But we have allowed these elites to put in whoever they want. People that they buy and pay for. People that don't have our best interests at heart. People that will sell your children. Because these people at the top of the board of health, they clearly don't care about your children. They if they care about your children, they, they wouldn't be telling your children that biologically you can change your gender when that's impossible. Right. They wouldn't be telling right. your children that. It's bullshit. They say follow the science, but when it comes to that, they don't want to follow the science, right? right. right. Don't follow the science. Follow the money. Right. Do your own research. And I advise you, before I get off, there's a book that, that I read when I was only 16 years old. And I gave up on television because if you think about it, television is tell a live vision. It's all right. programming. Yeah. It's called TV programming because you're programming your mind That's and your right. perception. Exactly. And then control everything, everything that you see. So this book is called <laughs> Behold a Pale Horse. It's called Behold a Pale Horse by William Cooper. Written in 1991. Make sure you get the, the not edited version and your mind is going to be blown. There's a lot of things I can't even talk about because a lot of people don't even understand. But I, I just hope that no matter what happens, whether you stay in New York or not, whether they come down to your house knocking, make sure that you stand in your integrity. And if you don't want to do something, don't do it. Even if it costs you your life. Freedom doesn't come free. No. Freedom, doesn't, I'm sorry, it doesn't come free. So if, it, if, if, if you have to lose your life, in order to stand up for what is morally correct, to stand up for what God would want you to do, then you do that because I already told my mom in 2020, because back in March, I already knew the government was lying because psychologically, I was able to see how they were trying to manipulate the public. And I told my mom that if I had to die, I'm gonna die. I'm not gonna do something that I don't wanna do. If I don't wanna get vaccinated, I would die on that. That's the hill that I'm willing to die on. I'm not gonna get vaccinated. If you wanna get vaccinated, that's the hill that you want to die on. That's on you. God bless you. God bless you. On my right, thousands by my side War between good and evil, watching our fists collide Battle for our freedom now, to the streets we ride Flags waving all around, we This is where we make a stand, no one give or take March around the capital, for the city gates Corrigan, who is running to become the youngest member of Congress in modern history And the first woman to serve in the second congressional district in New York Hi everyone. My name is Kay Corrigan. How are you, Brooklyn? I love to take that down. Thank you so much for being here. It's so cold, but we're loud and we're strong and we're not going nowhere. So we're gathered here today because New York is in a very difficult place in our nation's history. Our dictator, our unelected dictator, Kathy Hochul, yes, she is trying to bypass our democratic process and our state legislature. She wants to forcibly detain anyone she deems a public health threat. Yes, that can be anyone. That can be you, it can be me. The language that Kathy Hochul is using is so vague that it can be understood as targeting the unvaccinated. Boom. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm unvaccinated. And, and like Joe, I will die on that hill. I will never get vaccinated. Thank you. But we have to be aware about what's happening 
to our country. Yes. We are not going to take this anymore, Kathy yep. Hochul. We're not taking it anymore. Yes. We've been deceived, we've been manipulated, and we are being segregated and no more! No more! No more! I will not comply! I will not comply! We 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 are not free if we do not have the right to say no! We are not free if we do not have religious freedom. We are not free if we are not allowed to ask questions. We are not allowed, we are not free if we are not allowed to speak our thoughts. So we say enough is enough. We need to bring back our freedom, demand our rights. Kathy Hochul is violating our rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and no more. No more. So we're going to rise up because we have two options in New York. We either fall and cave to tyranny and evil. No. No. And we're not going to do that because we're going to rise up and demand our rights and save our country, save our beautiful state of New York. That's why I'm running for Congress. I overturned my college's policy in requiring the COVID-19 vaccine. And thank you. And I'm a reverend, and as a reverend, I've helped over 7,000 Americans in 48 states file successful religious exemption letters yes. to save their jobs! Yes! To allow them to continue going to school! Yes! Our basic human rights must be protected regardless of your vaccination status, and yes. that's why the first thing that I will do in Congress is introduce the Medical Freedom Protection Act, yes. which will protect every American from being segregated or discriminated against based on medical status, including vaccination status. Yes. Yes. So please help me. Go to my website, kcorrigan.com. I need volunteers. I need support. And help me to help protect our Constitution, protect our freedoms. Go So ladies and gentlemen, before there were Canadian truckers, before there were Canadian truckers, before the idea of this rally was conceived, there was a Rocco pastry shop, also known as Patisseria Rocco, in Beirut. And Mary Josephine Generoso, who defied a citywide order and refused to discriminate against the unvaccinated. Please welcome Mary Josephine. Right. Hello everybody, how are you? I know it's cold out there, so I'm gonna to try to keep this as you know short as possible. I just want to say that when the mandates came out, when de Blasio said that I had to start discriminating and segregating people based on a vaccine, it was enough for me. It was where I drew the line. You know, we have to understand that this is global. This is coordinated. We all know right now what's going on. They want to control us. They want us divided. They want to make sure that we don't see each other as humans. This is inhumane what they're asking us to do. You know, I thought about this long and hard. Who, who are our politicians? Who are they? Are they better than me? Are they better than you? No. Should I be listening to a politician who is telling me to hurt my fellow American? No. Should I listen to a politician that is telling me I have to see people outside if they're not vaccinated? Should I listen to a politician who is telling me to do something that I wouldn't do 
do to a dog on a cold day? No. I look at everybody as my neighbor. I look at you as my friend. I do not look at people based on a vaccine. I don't judge people if they're vaccinated. I shouldn't even have to know if you're vaccinated. You know what, we talk about exemptions. I'm so sick of hearing exemptions. You wanna know why? We shouldn't ask anybody, we shouldn't have to ask anybody uh, to be exempt from taking a vaccine. I, I understand why we need, we need an exemption for all of you that have lost your jobs because you had to get vaccinated, it was a way out, but we should have said no. No. You, you know, yes, that's right, we should have said no. That's right. Here's, that's here's the problem that I have with this. The problem is, if we don't stop this now, it's going to continue. The reason why I'm here today is to tell anybody that's out there that can go to their local businesses, go to their favorite restaurants, and tell them enough already. This does not stop unless we stop it. Right, right. Uh, it, it's difficult. I mean, I get people telling me, um, I can't do what you did. I have a mortgage. I can't do what you did. I, I, have, I have kids in school. I can't do what you did. I have to put food on the table. Guess what? I have the same things. I have kids. I have a mortgage. I have a car payment. I have to worry about 20 something odd employees. I am putting their lives on the line. But if I don't do it, who will? Yeah. And that's the point. If not now, you guys man. have to hold the, hold the line. Nobody else will do this for you. And right. you know what? I am not going to take any guidance from somebody who does not want me to love my brother, who does not want me to love my neighbor, who does not want me to love my fellow New Yorkers. And I am not taking any advice or direction from somebody that wants to destroy my country. Right. politician out there that has divided us. Shame on the people in power who are telling me that I don't count, that I can't go to a restaurant, that me and my family can't go see a movie in New York City. This is going to spread everywhere if we don't stop it now. They are tyrants and guess what? We can stop this if everybody now just ends it. And the way to end it is to be united, to spread the word. And you know what? By being here, if I can spark a little bit of courage to the next person that will bring it forward, then that's what needs to happen. And I know it's cold out there, so I have really nothing much else to say, but I love you and God bless you and God bless America. Yes, from Educators for Freedom, please welcome Mo Oliver. What's going on, Brooklyn? What's going on, Brooklyn? I can't, I don't, is it? Brooklyn is only over here? No, it's over here. Brooklyn over here too? Yeah. Talk, I, I asked, what's going on, Brooklyn? Yeah. All right, this is what I'm talking about. Look, I want to give a shout out to the I want to give a shout out to the cops over there. Yeah. I see you over there, you know, staying warm. Look, let me let y'all know something about me. Like, I don't play politics. I'm sorry, I don't. Look, I don't do politics. I don't. And I'm going to tell you why. Division is a problem. Uh, George Washington, the first president of the United States, in his farewell address, warned against political parties. And he's right. The truth is, there's division in America. And the division is starting with the politics of today. Well, started from the days of George Washington. And we have the same problem today. So I'm not about Republican. I'm not about Democrat. I'm about the people. And here's what I want you. We, the people, we need to understand what's going on. We need to learn about what our government is doing. Because here's what I, and, and every day I'm learning. So you know, if you don't know who I am, 
I'm a teacher. I've been teaching with the New York City Department of Education for 23 years. We got this group called Educators for Freedom, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's right. We, you know, and, 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 and we are fighting for our religious exemption, right? I'm against the mandate completely, right? But at the same time, I do realize that I'm going to stand on my God's word. And my God told me not to put that in my, my body. The Most High God said to me, don't put this in my body. So I'm standing on the Most High God's word, right? So let me, let me, I want you guys to understand this. What I'm learning right now is that New York in the court, New York City is a corporation. Yeah. When they go to the court and they address New York City, they're not addressing you guys. They are addressing New York City as a corporation. Right. And, and they are definitely trying to keep you outside of what's going on. For example, the judges, you guys all heard Judge Sotomayor say the nonsense about 100,000 students, 100,000 kids were on ventilators, right? You heard that. When it was in, uh, the CDC director, Rosel Walensky, was forced to make the statement that it was only about 3,000 kids, right? And what I want you to understand is that none of those court papers are made available for you guys to read how the judges response, responded, right? We are able to read our social media posts. You're able to read what the New York Post writes. You're able to read what C or listen to what CNN is saying. But you are not allowed to read the court documents unless you pay for it. So the, the, the court system right now is very isolated. So when you listen to, when you read the paper and the CNN to, or, or the Post or the Daily News, they give you sound bites like, oh, Judge Sotomayor just gave the green light or, or the courts gave the green light for them to fire the city employees. They're simply trying to play with your perspective. Which is why, if we really want, if we really want to change this country, if we really want to change, the, stop paying attention to your, to your political differences. What's good about this pandemic is that I am a black man out here in, what, what neighborhood is this? Where, what neighborhood is this? Exact Graves Inn, which, which, you know, New York is segregated, right? So it's a predominantly white neighborhood, right? Shout out to all my white folks, right? Love you. I'm coming from Bed-Stuy, but the pandemic did this. It made it so that me, this little old black man from, from Crown Heights, I'm from Crown Heights, y'all, so I, I, lived among the, I, I lived among the Hasidic community, so you guys are my brothers even before this. So what the pandemic has done, it has unified New York City. You get what I'm saying? We are really the divided states of America. We are. We are really trying to live our namesake by making us the United States of America right now. So, I'm encouraging you guys to pay attention to what the people are doing, because your political leaders are not going to change this. They work for corporate New York. Yeah. Okay? All of the lawyers, they work for corporate New York. Right now, I'm going through this whole process, the corporate process of trying to fight for our rights. We're doing it the way that we say it should be done. And the courts have said, and you can read it, I think MSN wrote, a, wrote, a, wrote an article about it today that says that they broke the Constitution when they denied the teachers who applied for religious exemption. They broke our First Amendment rights. Right. Susan Paulson, who's the city's attorney, said that, yes, the, we there were some constitutionally infirm practices. The, the judges said that there were constitutionally infirm practices, yet the teachers are still on an unpaid leave. How is it that you can say that the Constitution was broken, but yet you're going to fire them? Are you paying attention to what's going on? Right. So, the reality is that they're not they don't care about that constitution they care more about keeping faith with the corporate members of New York that's not you that's not me so if we really want to change things we need to start reading and understanding what, what's going on in the law and advocate for these political leaders that's coming up that said they're gonna look I don't know these guys they said they're gonna make change we need to put pressure on these new leaders to advocate for the people and step outside of corporate New York so look y'all I'm all about the people. I'm all about doing what the people say is necessary. I'm all, and, and we all don't have to think alike. 
because that's the beauty of life. We all don't have to have the same practices. Just pay attention to the world, right? It's snowing right now in New York, but if you go down to Aruba somewhere, you got sun. That's the beauty about God. The earth has differences, which means it's okay for you to be who you are. It's okay for me to, me to be who I am. We just need to have space for each other's differences and love everyone. Look, love covers over a multitude of sins, y'all. You know what I mean? So look, if you got it in your heart, if, it, if you're moved to donate to Educators for Freedom, do that. If you're moved to donate to another court, to the firefighters, do that. If you're moved to donate to the police department, do that. At the end of the day, we are the only ones that's going to save ourselves. None of these political leaders are going to save us, and it don't take a lot of us. It only takes a little bit of us to make this noise. And I'm telling you right now, they are listening, and the, the armor of these people is cracking. They're going to reduce the mandate. They have to, right? Because we're not going to stand for it. Are y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Look, I knew I was coming to Brooklyn, my hometown. I love you guys, man. I love you guys.